Hello, Suzanne. I'm Dr. Skavinsky. I understand that you're here to work through the emotions and thoughts that you have and will have following your accident in which you broke your ankle. My first question to you, Suzanne, is what is your greatest fear or what are your greatest fears going forward? Thank you for seeing me, doctor. I really feel that I need help in working through all the emotional impacts that this accident is causing. As far as my fears, my fears are being not non-weight bearing for up to 12 weeks, which is a possibility. I can't imagine, I can't stand that thought. 12 weeks of hopping around and being dependent on other people. Not being covered by insurance, that's a fear I have. Um, I'm afraid of, over time, wearing out my husband's patience. He's a very patient and loving and caring and giving person, but, you know, do people have their limits? That weighs on me. Um, oh, concerned about long-term, possible long-term consequences from this break, uh, one of them being... Uh, arthritis, severe arthritis and chronic pain. Uh, I'm also afraid of falling again when I'm hopping around or trying to maneuver and maybe doing maneuvers I shouldn't be doing. A moment ago you asked me what things I can be thankful for in this situation. I am thankful that my husband is here, that he was here at the time of the accident and that he will be here for the duration. I'm thankful that my daughter and he were able to push and pull me up the hill after the accident. I'm thankful for the good medical care that I have been receiving and anticipate receiving. I'm thankful that it wasn't worse than what it was, that I didn't die or cause a severe brain injury or spinal or neck injury, anything like that. Your independence and self-reliance has been severely curtailed and I understand that your husband is living with you and is a huge help. Can you tell me your feelings about being dependent on your husband for so many things? I am a very independent person. I like doing things for myself. So it will be hard to depend on other people and to let the little things go like dust and just to know that it's unimportant. And the problem is that I might try and do things myself and get myself into more trouble. Now that your work schedule and your normal activities have been put aside, how do you feel you can spend your time in a fulfilling way. There are quite a few things I could be doing while I am put on the shelf. One of the things I'd like to do is work on videos to use on social media and my website for my business. I want to do a lot more needle felting portraits, try new things, different things. There's even a course that I purchased uh, for needle felting that I haven't 
watched yet, I would like to do that and, and, and increase my skills. Uh, I have to work on my taxes and maybe I can organize and get rid of things. Um, I can spend time, very good times with my grandkids. Uh, that's a very joyful thing to look forward to. Lastly, I can probably pick up the violin again, which I've neglected. Now that I have unlimited time on my hands. So those are things that I can see that are positive that I can use this time for accomplishing. Blaming myself for this accident is something that has tormented and haunted me. Uh, I beat myself up for not having bailed when I saw that I was about to crash. Why didn't you just roll off? And I don't know why. And I feel like if I had, of course, none of this would have happened, but I didn't. So that's one thing that I have to work on letting go of is feeling like it was my fault. Look at me, Suzanne. It was not your fault. It was an accident. James 1 verse 2 says, Consider it a great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. But endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. Suzanne, I wonder if you are able to accept this circumstance, this difficulty, as a gift from the hand of the God who loved you so much, he sent his son to give his very life to purchase a relationship with you again. The hand that did that, can it not also use the trials and the hardships in your life to produce something good in you, for you, and for the good of others? You're right. I need to truly embrace that truth that an all-knowing God, an all-seeing God, all-powerful, all-loving God has allowed this to come into my life and that he never does anything with outside of love and outside of wanting good for us, his children. So the more I embrace it, the more I look forward to seeing what it is that he's going to do through this to for my good and the good of those around me. <laughs> 